Hey guys, my name is Patrick and welcome to another edition of Prague's Tour Guide. In today's episode we'll talk about a Strahov Library, one of the most beautiful libraries in the world. It's located right in the Strahov Monastery, so let's check it out. The Strahov Monastery was founded in 1143 by the Premonstratensian Order. In 1420 it was burned down completely by the Hussite Wars, by the Hussites who were the Czech Protestants, and for several centuries it was a ruin until the beginning of 17th century when it was rebuilt in a Baroque style. In 1627 the body of Saint Norbert, he was the founder of the Premonstratensians, it was moved from Magdeburg in Germany to here, he's buried in this church of the Assumption of Our Lady and therefore this monastery became the most important Premonstratensian monastery in the whole world. So today it's a complex of buildings with the church, we have a brewery uh, of Saint Norbert which exists since the beginning of 17th century and uh, then the library which is the object we'll focus on today. So let's check it out. Yeah, so guys, we'll start inside a theological hall. So we'll get more exclusive access. As you can see, absolutely gorgeous. So guys, we're now inside the Theological Hall, which was created in 1679 by uh, Domenico Orsi, Italian architect, and it contains close to 20,000 religious books, and also the second largest collection of Bibles in the world, second to Vatican only. Actually, the whole northern wall of the library is, uh, is the Bibles. Now, altogether in the library, there are uh, over 200,000 books um, but all the religious books are inside this hall. Uh, then we have the other hall, which is called the Philosophical Hall, where we'll go later. And there are 40,000 books dedicated to different sciences. And what's really cool over here, this is called Compilation Table. And a compilation wheel, it's from 1678. It was made for the library. And what's really cool, like you can turn this like this, and you can see that the books actually remain in the same angle and this wheel it's used for if you want to make a compilation so you want to study different texts different books and you want to compile them into one text like this would have been really useful when I was doing my thesis so most of the books in the library uh, were not made by the monks they actually were, were given to the monks by uh, different noblemen who had huge collections you know in their own libraries and decided to give it to the monks to spread the information in them because uh, the Premonstratensians were educating people. Now notice that a lot of the books, uh, they are white. Now white was a fashionable color but also it was for practical reasons because the white books, you know, they have a cover made out of pork skin, pig skin, and uh, you know that had to be put in a lime and lime is white so that's why they are most, of, most of them are white. Uh, the other ones, they were made out of like beef, uh, beef skin. So most of the books here are from 16th and 17th century. Now what's really unique and interesting here is also the globes in the middle. So they either show like earth or they show the astronomical sky, the night sky. And this one for example is very valuable, it's from 1648, it was done by a Dutch company Blau, it was a family business from Rotterdam and they were specializing for generations, they were specializing in making these globes. And since it's from 1648, you can see for example here, there's the United States, but California is made as an island. Like back then they thought it was an island. It was 20, 28 years after the Mayflower. Now the paintings on the ceiling in the theological hall were painted by Seat Nosecki. We have his auto portrait over here. Siat Nosecki, he painted it in 1720s 
And the series of paintings is inspired by a quote from the Bible, from the Old Testament, which is uh, Enisium Sapienta Timor Domine, the beginning of wisdom is in the fear of God, which means that first you should be hum humble in the eyes of God, you should accept faith, study uh, Christianity, and then make new discoveries. So uh, also there's a lot of quotes in the paintings from the book of Proverbs. So guys, now we're leaving the theological hall and we're entering the philosophical hall, the philosophical part of the hall. Uh, this hall is dedicated to different sciences. So like here we have books about law, here we have medicine books, and it's basically all the different sciences, you know, different from religion. Now here on the wall, we have like paintings of different abbots throughout the history. On the carpet, you know, on the ground we have like carpets. These are from Persia, these are from Pakistan. So there's a lot of like different objects in the, in the monastery, in the library that are very valuable. These are jewelry boxes over here from different noblemen. And this little wardrobe here is really cool because it has a, like a little puck dog on the side. So I guess the owner liked this dog, maybe it was his own dog. Anyway, now we're entering the philosophical hall. So guys, and now we're standing inside the philosophical hall, the most beautiful hall in the Strauff Library. So this hall contains more than 40,000 books and the hall itself was done in 1794. So it's approximately 120 years younger than the previous hall. So guys, this hall, it's built in Baroque style and Baroque style, it's all about symmetry. What's symmetrical is beautiful. And what's interesting here, like how do you think you can get up to the second floor? There's like no staircase here, at least not a visible one. So the artist, he decided to hide the staircase. So if you look in the corner here, you can see these are fake books and there's a secret door. And if you open it, you have a hidden spiral staircase going up. So how cool is that? Now it's really cool as well. If you look at the shelves on, of the, on, where the books are, you can see actually that the shelves are getting like closer to each other as you go further up and the books are getting smaller and that creates optical illusion that the hall is actually taller than it is. So Baroque style is full of these optical illusions. Now the woods itself that they use, it's made out of walnut and it's gold plated, such as you can see over here. And the floor is oak. And if you look here in the middle, we have a cabinet, which is a gift from Maria Luisa. She was the second wife of Napoleon and one of the celebrities who visited the monastery. So she visited here in 1812 and she donated this cabinet with um, books. There's a catalog of art from Louvre. So, um, you know, there aren't many catalogs of art from Louvre um, from that time, from 1812, because Napoleon, he destroyed most of them because he didn't want the world to know that most of the art in Louvre was actually stolen from other countries, especially Italy. So this is, I think, only one of four existing copies of the original first edition of the catalog. The bust on top, that's uh, father of Maria Louis, uh, Francis I, the Austrian emperor. So Napoleon beat this man in the Battle of Austerlitz in 1805. And then they arranged a marriage between Francis I's daughter, Maria Louis, and Napoleon to create a lion. So it was a political marriage, but they didn't like each other. Now guys, the painting inside the Philosophical Hall was painted by Anton Malberg and his student in 1794. Ant Anton Malberg was an experienced painter from Vienna and it took them six months to, to paint it. Now, it was relatively fast and they painted it while they were on a scaffolding on their knees. You know, a lot of people think that uh, back then the painters were like lying on their backs and were painting on their backs, but that's not true. It's a rumor, they were actually on their knees. 
So Michelangelo, for example, when he was painting the Sistine Chapel, he was also on his knees. And so six months it took here. Uh, the other hall, it's, it took uh, two years to paint. Anyway, so let's focus on what we see here. So the painting, it's called The Journey of, of Mankind to Wisdom. And it starts with the beginning of civilization, so the Old Testament. So we can see Moses with the Ten Commandments, in the back the Ark of the Covenant. Then here it takes us through the Greek civilization. There are some scenes from Greek mythology. Then we have the man below the sun, that's Alexander the Great. So that's the Hellenistic era. He's there with his teacher Aristotle and his horse. Then we have Lighthouse of Alexandria. Then those three men, they're Greek philosophers. There's Diogenes living in the barrel. You know, he was a founder of skepticism. And then finally here we have the rise of Christianity in the world, which is depicted uh, by Saint Paul giving a speech and the, uh, in Athens at the altar of unknown God. And from it, the smoke rises with Virgin Mary holding the cross. That is the rise of Christianity. And we have different Czech saints in the corner. And then we have coat of arms of the Pronstratensian order on the flag. Then the lady in front of the sun, she represents wisdom and the Catholic faith. And what's really interesting is the scene where you see like naked men falling down from the sky and rocks are falling on them and lightnings are being thrown at them. And those are people who actually abandoned the Catholic faith and they are not wise anymore. So they're not, not doing so well. And then it ends with allegories of different sciences. So it's basically like a story of mankind from the Old Testament until 1794 when this hall was created. Yeah, so guys, among other cool things in the library, there's also like this piece of furniture, which is actually a table and you have a chair and also it's a staircase. So it's three in one. Actually, you can fold the chair and shove it inside the table. So now it's just a, just a table. And if you remove it and you can actually flip one side of the table over to the other. There are two joints. I'm not going to do it because it's like fragile and we shouldn't do it. But if you flip this side over to the other side, there is a staircase so you can reach some of the higher position books. Pretty cool, isn't it? Anyway, and next we will see the Hall of Curiosities. You know, there are different um, objects that were given to the, to the monks, you know, by, uh, by one nobleman, Karel Jan Eben in 1798. And they're actually like stuffed animals. There are, you know, there's a horn of a narwhal, which they believe was a horn of a unicorn in the past. There's a model of a boat from 17th century. There are weapons and uh, other, other curious things. Yeah, guys, and one of the most exceptional pieces of the collection here in the Hall of Curiosities are these two black long things. Those are actually dry penis, penises of a whale. So, uh, isn't that fascinating? The thing in the middle is the horn of the narwhal. narwhal. All right, guys, so now that we're leaving the library, I would like to give away a special thanks to the Strauss Library uh, management for laying us uh, shoot the video inside for we would like to thank for this exclusive footage and now we'll have a beer in the monastery brewery so let's go for one So guys, now we're inside a brewery and they have like many different beers. I'm gonna go for the wheat beer this time. And uh, it's the only place where you can get this beer. So I definitely recommend coming here either before or after the library and just like have some, have some good Czech lagers. All right guys, cheers. Nazdraví. Yeah, delicious beer. 
All right, guys, so this is the end of our short tour of the Strauss Library. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Now, as always, if you'd like to book a tour, either with me or one of my colleagues in person, uh, feel free to check our website, lucytours.com. Uh, it's also possible for us to arrange a private tour, exclusive one of the Strauss Library. We can add it to any of our Prax tours. Uh, feel free to subscribe as well. Also, if you would like, uh, you can leave a, a comment in the comment section about uh, what shall we shoot next, what area of Prague or what historical event are you interested in. We can, we can make a video about it. So thanks again and I'll see you on our next tour. So take care guys.